Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's talk about chlamydia now. Chlamydia is a intracellular or an obligate intracellular organism uh, that has to be inside of some sort of mucosa to be infectious. Why is that? Well, as you see here in this first point, it cannot make its own ATP. So it has to utilize the ATP of the host to be able to continue its cell cycle and replication and movement and everything associated with chlamydia. Chlamydia trachomatis causes neonatal and follicular adult conjunctivitis, as well as non-gonococcal urethritis, pelvic inflammatory disease, and reactive arthritis. Now there are a couple other chlamydia organisms, and they cause some different things. So let's talk about those. Chlamydia pneumoniae and chlamydia cetacea all cause atypical pneumonia, and these are transmitted by an aerosol. So we can have two different types of chlamydial infections as far as how they're transmitted. So a lot of times this is transmitted sexually, other times it can be transmitted through the air. Uh, some facts about chlamydia that actually has a cell wall that lacks peptidoglycan, so that means beta-lactam antibiotics will be ineffective. Those beta-lactam antibiotics go in and try and attack that cell wall, the peptidoglycan on the cell wall and destroy it, but without that peptidoglycan we can't use the beta-lactam antibiotics. So we can break down uh, chlamydia with chlamys, which is going to be an ancient Greek term uh, for a cloak. Uh, it's a short cloak that was worn by men in ancient Greece. And so we can think of clamys, meaning cloak, means it's intracellular. So chlamydia is an obligate intracellular organism. Chlamydia cetacea has an avian reservoir, so that comes through parrots. So you remember cetacea uh, comes through parrot. And it's going to cause our atypical pneumonia. To be able to diagnose chlamydia, we've got to do a lab test. Specifically, we can do a PCR, or a nucleic acid amplification test, oftentimes abbreviated NAAT. And then what we're going to see here is cytoplasmic inclusions on a GIMSA or a fluorescent antibody stained smear. Uh, so what we're going to see here in this picture is actually uh, some of those inclusion bodies. It's these brown inclusion bodies that are actually being seen here in this particular case uh, in a McCoy cell culture. So there are two forms of chlamydia that are present, and it's going to be the elementary body and the reticulate body. Now this is a little bit confusing, so I'm going to show you a picture here in a second, so stick with me here. But these two forms, the elementary body is a small, dense body that's infectious. So E elementary is infectious, and it E enters the cell via endocytosis, okay? These, uh, what basically is going to happen here is going to transform into the reticulate body. So it's entering the cell as a small, dense body, transforms to the reticulate body, which then the reticulate body comes out and replicates by cell division and reorganizes into elementary bodies. So what we're seeing here is going to be a cycle where it comes here and then it comes back. So back and forth, back and forth. So let's look at this picture here a little bit closer. What you're seeing here is, uh, we'll start here at the top, this is where the elementary body enters into the target cell. At that point in time, it now transforms into a reticulate body and undergoes binary fission to create more reticulate bodies, which then reorganize themselves into elementary bodies. So you can see they've broken down from the large ones here in the middle to these little small ones on the outside. Then we continue multiplication. We have a huge cell full of these elementary bodies that then release themselves and go on into other cells as the elementary bodies that transform and continue that cycle over and over and over, okay? So that's the two forms of chlamydia that we have in the body and how they continue their replication cycle. How do we treat this? Azithromycin is going to be the first treatment and it's just gonna be a single dose, not a side dose. This is gonna be a single dose, okay? Single dose of azithromycin or we can also use doxycycline uh, and ceftriaxone. Why do we add ceftriaxone here with doxycycline? Not because of any type of a potential resistance, but this is because oftentimes chlamydia, as we talked about earlier in a different bacteria, chlamydia oftentimes will 
present itself with gonorrhea. So we give ceftriaxone and doxycycline to cover a concomitant chlamydia and gonorrhea infection. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.